Amen. Turn to someone and say to the person, I see the glory of God in your life. Okay, let me use my Nigeria voice. Turn to somebody and tell him or her, I can see the glory of God in your life. Say to somebody, turn to somebody, I can see the glory of God in your life. Come on. Pastor, do we talk in this church? I want to hear you. Turn to somebody and say it. Let me hear you. Okay, say it again. Say it as someone that means it. Let's give Jesus a clap offering. Amen. Just as I look forward to see your pastor in Ekpoma, Nigeria, every year. So how long? I don't know. Because after the two years visa, it's going to get another two years. Amen? Amen? I love coming to fellowship here. I love Spending time with your pastor. I, I enjoy his presence. I enjoy the knowledge of God, the revelation, the true revelation that is in him. I, I love to fellowship with some people. Amen? And you are blessed to have him as your pastor. Amen? Now, I want to say this, that the presence of the Lord is here and place. Connect to this presence. If you don't connect, you will be wondering what is going on, what are they saying? But when you get yourself connected, you find that it's a joyful thing to be connected to God. Amen? Some people say, wow, are you, you talk to God? Yes, I do. Amen? He talks to me. I hear his voice. He's my father. I have that relationship with him. I'm not a stranger. Amen? He lost me and I lost him. And he talks to me, I talk to him. And that is what God wants from us. Amen? Amen? This morning, I'll be sharing on what I call abiding in Christ or remaining in Christ. Some translations will use the word remain. Abiding in Christ. And I'm going to talk on two areas. That is what it means to remain in Christ. And the other one, what it takes to remain in Christ. The first one is what it means to remain in Christ. The second one is what it takes to remain in Christ. Let's pray. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you adoration. You are God. You never fail. You love us. That is why you send your son, your only begotten son, to die for us. Not only he died, he rose. And today he's seated at your right hand. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you for this congregation. Thank you, Lord, for my life. Thank you, Lord, for you speaking this morning. You've started even through worship. Father, speak more. Help us to understand who we are in Christ Jesus and help us to put it to work that your name and your name alone be glorified and the blessing be poured on your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn with me to the book of John. John chapter 15. I'll be reading from verses 1 to 8. I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. 2. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges, that it may bear more fruits. 3. Ye are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. For abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine, neither can you unless ye abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear much fruits. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he casts out as a branch, and it withers. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burnt. If ye abide in me, and my word abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire, what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruits, so you will be my disciple. Abiding. When you look at this very short verses, verses 1 to 11, I'm, I'm not going there, but to, you find that the word abide is used more than nine times. To abide, to remain in Christ. Let's look at the scripture carefully. Verse number two. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit is taken it takes away. He takes away. And every branch in me that bear fruit, he purges that it may bear more fruits. First of all, we have the fruit of the Spirit, which Galatians talks about. Love, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, temperance. These are fruit of the Spirit. But when we look at the other fruit in verse number 16 of this very chapter, it tells us that he chose us that we will go forth and bring forth fruit and that our fruit will remain. As a child of God, you must be fruitful. As a child of God, you must be fruitful. The first I want to ask, if you have read the book of Galatians chapter 5, the fruit of the Spirit, are you bearing them? Do you have long suffering? Do you have joy? Are you gentle? Do you have the fruit of the Spirit? It's your right because the moment you have the Spirit of God in you, the Spirit of God in you ought to be bearing fruits. The other one I want to ask is, since you gave your life to Christ, 
It may be 100 years ago, you gave your life to Christ, but I don't think there's anyone as old as 100 years here. Okay, 40 years ago, 20 years ago, since you gave your life to Christ, how many souls have you preached to? How many souls have you shared the gospel with? And how many have you converted? You have to ask yourself, as a child of God, so winning is our responsibility. It is our responsibility. You say, oh, what of if he doesn't hear or if he doesn't respond? What do I do? Keep on loving him. Keep on sharing it. One day, one day, he or she will accept the gospel. Amen? It is my prayer that your friend will not die. You know why? She'll be cheating us. You know why I said she'll be cheating us? Tell her I said she'll be cheating us if she dies. Because she has not won any soul. She's giving her life to Christ. She needs to win soul before she dies. Amen? Tell her she needs to win soul. She should not be thinking of going to heaven yet. Amen? Praise the Lord. We are talking of fruitfulness. We are talking of abiding in him. Jesus Christ said we should abide in him. When we do, then we'll be able to bear fruit. For without him, we can do nothing. Amen? What does it mean to abide in him? One, it means walking with him. When you abide with him, you walk with him. Amen? Two, it means walking in love. If you are abiding in Christ, you walk in love. Love has to manifest in you. You cannot tell me you are a Christian, you are a child of God, when hatred is all that is in you. No. When you walk with Christ, love will be there. Amen? The Bible tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God is love. And if you have God in your life, love must manifest if you allow it to manifest. So, Jesus Christ abiding in you. One, you walk with him. Two, you walk in love. Three, you walk in forgiveness. There are some people that you say they are hard to forgive. Because when you remember what they've done for you, done against you, you say, no, I can never. Please remember one thing. Look at your own life, what you did to God. But he forgave you. So God wants you to live in forgiveness. It's very, very important. If you are working with God, you must live a life of forgiveness. You live a life of forgiveness. The number four. Walking with him, abiding in him, will help you to share the gospel. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. When I abide in him, I'm not going to be ashamed of him. Amen? You tell me who do you believe. I'm not ashamed to tell the world I believe in Jesus Christ. No, today, many of us want to be like the world. No, the world has to be like me. Amen? The world has to be like me, not me, be like the world. 
sharing the gospel, sharing the good news. If you cannot preach as our beloved pastor, Robert, but you can share your good, your testimony, how you gave your life to Christ. You have to have a testimony, the life you used to live and the life you now live. It's a good message. I was this. When Jesus came into my life, I became a new creature. The things I love to do, I no longer do them. My parents couldn't change my life. My sisters couldn't change my life. The society couldn't change my life. But the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ changed my life. That is a testimony. That is a message to tell your neighbor, except you've not really, really know who Jesus Christ is, then you'll be ashamed to share him because you have no good testimony among your neighbors. But when you have good testimony, do what? Share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? If you have noticed, oh, good morning, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Jesus is Lord. Amen? You soon they see that crazy guy always say Jesus is Lord. Yes? Amen? You are sharing the gospel. Abiding in Christ will help us to live a godly relationship with others. Not relationship that is full of iniquity, but relationship with the fear of God. Relationship that you can trust someone. You have a good relationship with others. You relate with others. Only when you abide in Christ that you can have a good relationship with others. What does it mean to abide in Christ? It means having godly revelation. There are many revelations that are going on in the Christian kingdom today that scares me. Many ministers that you expect them to know the truth are drifting away because of false revelation. They try to get new, new revelation every day, which is not bad, as long as Jesus Christ is the center. Amen? Anything that will make me to be on equal authority with Jesus Christ, it's wrong. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. Amen? All that I receive is to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, not to be in the same position with Jesus Christ. I don't care what you say. You are gentle with Christ. That is true. You are gentle with Christ. That is the Bible. But at the same time, Jesus Christ is your Lord. Amen? Say, so give respect to whom respect is due. We must worship Jesus Christ. We must lift up Jesus Christ before the world. Amen? Abiding in Christ means walking in victory. Not walking in defeat. Walking in victory. The enemy will come. The enemy will try to sow seed into your heart. The enemy will want to say you are a loser. The enemy will try to tell you you can't make it. The enemy will tell you, oh, it is over. It can come through dreams. It can come through revelations. It can come through any form to try to put you in prison. But you stand and say, in Christ Jesus, I am victorious. I am one that conquers in Christ Jesus. I am a winner in Christ Jesus. I am unstoppable in Christ Jesus. I am unbeatable in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ, because I abide in him, his victory is my victory. What does it take to 
abide in him. What does it take to be fruitful? One, allow Jesus Christ into your life. You must be born again. Without Jesus Christ in the boat, there will be a problem. You must surrender to him. Allow him to be the Lord of your life. Give your life to him. He's not going to force himself into your life. You have to say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Accept him as your Lord. Accept him as your Savior. You may be a child. You may be an elderly person. Individually, we will stand before God. We will have to give our life. The scripture says, except the Lord build the city, the builder build in vain. It is not he that runneth, nor he that willeth, but God that showeth mercy. Allow God into your life by giving your life to him. When you abide with him, he abide with you. Victory and others will come in. So the first step is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal savior. The second one is be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen? Be baptized with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongue. Thank God that in this church you speak in tongue. I preach many churches that they don't speak in tongue. But thank God you do hear. Amen? And I do tell people I speak in tongue more than you all. Amen? If I pray for two hours, at least one and a half hours of my prayer will be speaking in tongues. The Holy Ghost is my partner. I pray. There are things, like now I'm in the uh, U.S. I have eight churches in Nigeria with their pastors. How do I communicate with them? I hardly call them. But in the spirit, I communicate with them. How? I pray in tongues. And when I'm praying in tongues, the Holy Ghost knows their problem, knows what they are passing through. Amen? I'm not the one to tell the Holy Ghost, do this. He knows what to do. It may be he will not even direct me to my church in Nigeria. It may be he go to Japan or India. Wherever someone has a need, the Holy Spirit enable me. When I speak in tongue, except it gives me interpretation, I don't know what I'm saying, but I know I'm speaking in the Holy Ghost. Amen? So you must be baptized if really you want the Holy Spirit to operate fully in your life. Amen? I'm not teaching on the Holy Ghost. Your pastor is there to teach on the Holy Ghost. I'm only telling you, allow the Holy Ghost to come into your life so that you can live a successful Christian life. Amen? Let me use a very funny example. If you are chewing bread, you know bread? How many of you have seen bread? If you have caught a loaf of bread and put in your mouth, I start chewing it. It will take you a long time to swallow. Okay? Because it needs saliva to pass through the throat. But if you want it to go through the throat, what do you do? Put liquid. The moment you put liquid, what happens? It goes fast. Huh? That is the way I look at the Holy Ghost. Amen? When I'm trying to struggle over certain things, what do I do? I start speaking in tongue. It goes faster. Amen? I'm just telling you the secret of my life. There are times I wake up around 2 o'clock to pray. Oh my God. I'm struggling. I dare not stay on bed because if I stay on bed, I will wake up 6 o'clock. So I get up and start, I'm still struggling. 
I don't have words to say. What do I do? I start speaking in tongue. I speak in tongue for about 30, then I don't know. Those days you used to have vehicle that you have to, I don't know, in, in the 60s in Nigeria, all these big vehicles, before you start them, there is what they call starter. They put it in the front of the vehicle and, <laughs> and turn it. Today, you just put something in your pocket, your vehicle start, but that time, they turn it, then it will start. And once it starts, you remove it. Uh, that is what the Holy Ghost is to me. When I'm struggling, I don't know what to do, I'm tired, I start speaking in tongue. And once I start speaking in tongue, wow, the fire. Amen? You'll be telling me when to, when to stop. Amen? So, be baptized with the Holy Spirit. The third one is spend time studying the word of God. Spend time studying the word of God. God told Joshua, meditate on the word of God day and night. And in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, says, study to show that self approve a workman that need not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? As a child of God, you want to abide in him. Spend time with the word of God. Study the word of God. I'm not saying read the word of God. Study the word of God. And if you are studying the word, get a note. To buy books in America is not hard. Go to, you can get a jotter, a note. Buy. What you don't understand, write it down. Today, thank God for internet. You can test your pastor. Pastor, what do this, I've I just read this passage, I don't understand it. Test it to him. I love him. I know what he can do. He will not ignore you. Amen? Don't just wait for Wednesday. Before you come to Bible, say, I'm going to study the Bible. No! The topic is going to teach on may not be what you are anxious to know about. So when you study, you have a question, write it down. Send the question to the pastor. Amen? That's personal lesson. Don't you have it here? Private lesson? Do you have private lesson here? Oh, we don't have it here. Do you know what it's called, private lesson? Huh? Lesson, private tutor. Huh? Private. Do it personal, not group. Okay? So, employ your pastor. Okay? Wednesday is general. Is that not right? Huh? Wednesday is general Bible study. Sunday is general service. Okay? Don't just wait on Sunday. Don't just wait on Wednesday. Engage him. He's loaded. Amen? I'm being honest with you. He's loaded. And send test messages to him. He will answer you. And you will grow faster than others. I'm telling you the secret. You will grow faster than those who are waiting on Wednesday and Sunday alone. Eat more. Amen? I don't know why I'm saying this, but have children. Have three or four children at home. There's one that doesn't like to eat. Huh? There's one that loves to eat. Even when you finish dinner, give it 30 minutes, you see him walking to the fridge. Amen? Is that, is that right? You see him walking to the fridge. What are you doing there? Mom, I'm hungry. You just ate 30 minutes ago. And there's one that didn't even eat. I'm not eating. You will easily see them. One is putting on weight, the other one is not. Why? Because it's not being fed. The same thing spiritually. 
Amen? The one that eats on Wednesday and Sunday service alone, you cannot compare the one that eats on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, and pastor just say, oh, Justina again? Justina, what, what question? He's always waiting for Justina's question. And when Justina starts testifying of the goodness of God, so whoa, what is going on? Justina, how do you get this revelation? Because Justina goes to the fridge after meal to take extra. Amen? Study the word of God. Amen? Don't play with the word of God. If you want to abide in Christ, you want Christ to abide in you, you want to ask something, and God will answer you, abide with him. Amen? Live a life of prayer. Number four, live a life of prayer. Last year, I spoke on prayer. And am I coming here tomorrow evening? <laughs> okay. Prevailing prayer. It is one thing to pray. It is another thing to prevail. Many Christians pray. Few Christians prevail. Many Christians pray. Few Christians prevail. We easily give up that we be done. As America normally say, give me a break. What is the will of God? We use that we be done as an excuse. Prevail. Jacob said to God, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. Oh, the wicked king. This widow went to him. Avenge me. Avenge me. It's wicked. He doesn't fear God. But he answered the widow. Amen? Don't let God go. Keep on asking him. And not that God can give it to you. God, the moment you ask, God releases it because Jesus paid the price. But let me tell you, there are prince of Pasha. There are forces, demonic forces in that area that govern that area that will not want you to receive your blessing. I give you a testimony, good testimony. In this America, a couple of Christians, they were living fine. They now bought a new house. Beautiful house, but people have lived there. When they move into that house, they've not spent two months. They were ready to divorce. They were living a good life. But when they bought that house, entered the house, things changed. But what saved the situation is that they went for someone who cancer. And this person had to be a Christian. The person said, can I visit your house? But when he had their testimony, the, the life they used to live, they don't have quarrel. They love each other. But the moment, they notice the moment they enter the house, their behavior towards each other change. So this woman now visited. The moment he walked in, she saw a, a design on the wall, beautiful design. And she asked, are you the one who put that design there? The wife said, no, we met it. We just... We decide not to wipe it because we love the design, the way it is designed. The, the woman brought her a book and showed them the design. It's occultic. This house was dedicated to occult. And when you came in, you allowed it. I'm not talking of Nigeria. I'm talking of the U.S. here. The cause was broken. And boldly tell you today, they are happily married. Prayer. 
Don't play with it. Spend time. When you don't understand what is going on, go, that is why we are blessed to be able to speak in tongues. When you don't understand what is going on, pray. Spend time to pray. Amen? When you spend time to pray, you will see things that we are impossible become possible. Number five, we must be doer of God-given instruction. We must be doer. When God tells you to do something, do it. You may not understand why. You may not understand. Sometimes, let me give an example. God asks you so certain amount of money into the work. Say, no, God, I have not paid my bill. I'm not telling when your flesh. I'm saying when God tells you to do it. So, God, I have not paid my bill. It may be God wants to open door for you. When you do it, you find a greater door being opened. Oh, God may tell you, don't go out. Don't watch television. Spend time with me. And that day is when they have, is it baseball? The ba- what is the most popular sport here? Football. No, women don't like football. No, 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 no. When it comes to the final, what is the final? The last uh, baseball, uh, football. Super Bowl, the last day. You know, these people are very funny. They don't put it on Monday. They don't put it on Tuesday. They don't put it on Wednesday. They put it on Sunday. And many men, and not women, many men will stay at home not to go into church. Is that not right? On that day, God may tell you off your television and spend time with me. <laughs> Pastor, why are you laughing? <laughs> Amen? Say, no, I will pray later. (laughs) Instruction. Like what I said in our friend's church on on Thursday, a general was asked to dip himself seven times. A general for maybe four star general. And the prophet didn't even come out to say, Hey, how, how are you doing? How are you doing, sir? Hey, oh, general, hey, please let me sit down here. Hey, come, 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 general. General is here. Ah! General in my church. Ah, come and stay in this specific position. A general. No. The man of God sent a message. Tell him to go and dip himself seven times. Why? For this man to know there is God in Israel. But instruction. The man was furious and said, are there not better rivers in where I came from? Yes, there are better rivers. But no presence of God in those rivers. And the servant said to him, or one of the servants said, if the prophet had asked you to do something greater than that, you would not have done it. Simply follow instruction. When God speaks through your pastor, giving you instruction, God is not telling you to analyze the instruction. Is it comfortable? 
Is it God? No. Obey instruction. Godly instruction. Amen. Godly instruction. I, I, I like putting that godly because today there are a lot of instructions that are not from God. Coming out from the pulpit. Coming out from pastors. God tells you to do this. God tells what is their heart saying it. God is not the one saying it. But when God speaks, because you are a child of God, you will know his voice. Amen? Amen? Number six. What? To bear fruit. Number six. Take away sin. S I N. Sin. Sin can come sweet. Sin will show you the beautiful aspect of it. But it doesn't show you the danger in it. There are many ways that seem right unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. Sin will come. Sin will give you reasons for you to justify yourself. Oh, I am being oppressed. No, I am done. They have done this to me. They have done. Sin will be telling you reasons why you should do what he's telling you to do. The moment you've done it, the same sin will turn around and start condemning you. And it will condemn you and condemn you and condemn you for until you repent. Because anytime you want to pray, the same sin, Mr. Devil, will bring your sin and say, you can't. You've done it. You told a lie. You cheat. You can't. The same devil asked you to do it. Now you've done it. The same devil turn around and start using it to do what? To imprison you. You sold your right. Sin may be small. No matter how pure a glass of water is, a drop of mud into that water made that water appear. So no matter how small, sin, sin is sin. Amen? Don't play with it. If you want the presence of God to abide with you always, do all you can to avoid sin. And when you fall into sin, please don't remain in sin. Ask God for mercy. Ask God for forgiveness. Don't remain there. Wake up, but don't sin willfully. Don't practice sin. Don't live in sin. You will destroy your life, destroy your relations. Because it's a seed. So if you want to remain in Christ, what it takes is watch over what you do. Watch over. Amen? The last one is have a strong desire to follow God. God cannot force you to serve him. God cannot force you to leave the level you are now to a higher level. No, today it's like we are raising more children in the church than raising disciples. No growth. Where you are two years ago is still where you are today, spiritually.
But fire is not born in your heart. David said, one thing have I desire, and that will I seek after, that I will dwell in the house of God. Martha went to Jesus and said to Jesus, tell my sister to come and join me. I'm the only one serving. And Jesus Christ said, Martha, Martha, you desire many things, but Mary have chosen the important one, and it will not be taken away from her. Because Mary was hungry to hear more and more. How hungry are you to hear the word of God? How hungry are you to pick your Bible? Do you read your Bible to fulfill all righteousness? No, when you read it, in, you know, in the Christian dom, you have to read your Bible in the morning. You have to read your Bible before going to bed. Is that not what we are taught in the Christian dom? But do you read your Bible in between? Do you sit down and just say, okay, let, I have nothing doing. Let me just read my Bible. Have a desire. Be hungry. The Bible says, he that hunger and tastes after righteousness, the same shall be filled. Be hungry. Have that appetite to know him. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. He said, leaving those things behind, I press to the mark of the hard calling. My focus is Jesus Christ. I want to be like him. I want to grow. I don't want to remain where I am. I pray that this will be our desire to be fruitful, to abide in him, to walk in love, to walk in strength, to walk with him, to be an overcomer, but above all, to share his love, share his goodness, share what you know about him with others. And when you do that, the blessings of God will come upon you. And when you ask anything, if you ask anything, anything, I mean anything, because you are abiding in him, you will not ask anything contrary to his will. Because you are abiding in him, he will have that confidence. And you do what? Amen? Pastor, allow me to use this one. I want to talk to two of you. I, I want to bring two of you to the open. So, forgive me. Okay? We went for, it was, was it lunch or breakfast? And she brought out a uh, pastor asked mama to pay. And it's like everybody was saying, oh, mama to pay? And she have to defend pastor by saying we have the same account. Within me, I said, oh, it, it defends the husband. My point is, not every couple have the same account. Not every. They love each other, but they don't trust each other. So they have different, I'm not talking of marriage account, I'm not doing counseling here. But they don't have the same account. Because they know that guy buys a lot. He, he, can, <laughs> he can empty the account. Uh, oh, when she go for shopping, 
My God. Before you know, the account is reading zero. So you have your account, you have my account. I have my account. And we have central account. It works for some people. Okay? That central account, you put some money, I put some money. So I will still have my own private, you will still have your own private. Okay? Beautiful, whatever you want to do. I'm not canceling. <laughs> my point is, when you trust, okay, you can use the account without the other person permission. The person trusts you. That is why you have joint account. Okay? That is what we are having with Jesus Christ. That is why I say, when you abide in me, I abide in you. You can ask whatever. It will be given to you. Because God knows that as long as you abide in him, you are not going to ask anything contrary to his will. So whatever you ask, you get. You understand it? I use the pastor as an example. Because they trust each other, okay, they have joint account. Because you are abiding, their trust to each other didn't start when they were yet in their mother's womb. No. They grew up into it. They've been living together as husband and wife over 34 years now. So, they trust each other. They fellowship with each other. They believe in each other. Because they fellowship with each other. The same thing. The more you fellowship with God, the more you know God. The more God can trust you, the more you can trust God. Because you know the word of God. Oh, do you take God time to trust you? No. He already know who you are. But he's waiting for you to do what? To respond to the level he knows about you. So spend time with him. And when you do, you find that the prayer people will pray and pray and pray and pray. You just say, come on, get up, you are healed. Why? Because of your abiding in him. The more you abide in him, the less time or the less your prayer is with the enemy. They know who you are. They know <laughs> you can play with any other Christians, but not this guy. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you adoration. Is there anyone in our midst that have not known you? I ask your blessings upon such a one that the light of the gospel will shine. The Lord, their eyes of understanding will be open, that they will give their life to you. Is there anyone among us that is struggling? Physically struggling, financially struggling, fin spiritually, physically. Let your healing grace manifest in such a person's life. Even now, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever, wherever you are, you heard the sound. You heard this message. I pray for you that your understanding will be enlightened. I pray for you that the desire that you have towards God will be met. I come against every obstacle, every barrier, Every satanic ministration, discouragement, I rebuke in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I speak life into you. I speak the blessings of God into you. As you abide with him, and he abide in you. I ask, ask whatever you will, and heaven will respond to you speedily in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. God bless you.